What up, players? It's Woolboss Tay up in this mud, and I uh, thought I'd take a break from painting my Iron Blaster and Venom for my tutorials and uh, get into a little bit of Imperial Guard because they're so easy. You can do them really quick with a minimal amount of time, and um, it's just a fun little break in between of my my other tutorials that I've been doing. So I'm going to show you a couple of models that is going to be the end standard that we're going to paint up to. And I'm gonna take you through a run of what paints you're gonna need, and then we are gonna get started. For our actual painting tutorial, we are going to, um, we're going to be painting the Vox Caster and a, a special weapon guy, the Flamer. So let me show you the Vox Caster. I think I used the legs for the medic from the command squad sprue. I wanted something different. So I wanted the Vox Caster to be kind of like kneeling down like he's getting orders. And uh, the Flamer comes, is you know, the guy that you get in the box. So except for the uh, leg switch out, both of these guys are going to be pretty much what you get in the Cadian shock troops box. So. Um, the reason I'm doing these guys instead of regular riflemen is because this guy comes with a rifle. So I'll teach you how to paint that up just like I paint the regular squad men. And um, because we use different techniques for painting the flamer, the flamer tanks. When I was deciding whether or not to build a flamer or a grenade launcher, I decided that this would be a little bit more fun. I actually started with these guys, so you'll see some of them are, uh, some parts of them might have like a little bit of brown showing through underneath because I was, I was doing some tests some test painting on these guys um, before I ended up going with the regular guys here. So this is pretty much the standard you're going to be getting to. Um, the highlights might be uh, a little bit too bright for you. Let me show you the highlight on this rifle again. This is uh, kind of like the extreme of one end where you can't really see any highlights on the rifle. This is the extreme on the other net, other end where you see a really, really fine, definite edge. So I'm going to teach you how you can achieve either result to match your playing style. But again, this is for the, um, the shock, shock attack troops for Cadia, Cadian shock at attack troop box, and um, this is the normal GW scheme. So if you want to have a GW color army, then just follow this tutorial. If you want to do something different, like I think I'll paint all 10 of these guys up the way they are quote unquote supposed to be painted, but then I also have my own ideas for alternative paint schemes for like jungle or urban warfare. But um, if you played Space Marine and you liked, you really dig the uh, look of the, the regular shock attack troops you meet along the way, or if you just like the, the um, the look and the feel of the regular Imperial Guardsmen, then this tutorial will give you everything you need to build it up to that standard. So let's take you through the paints you're going to need. Do I have them? Do I have them all? Yeah. So Camry Brown, Catechin Green. Talarn Flesh, Chaos Black, Astronomicon Grey, Ogryn Flesh, Badab Black, Camel Green, Bolt Gun Metal. And I believe for the uh, for the flamer guy, I just realized we're going to need a little bit of a different color for him. For the flamer, you are going to need some dwarf bronze. All right, so let's get started, shall we? Where's my? I gave Igor the day off since it's Saturday, so I don't have anyone to. Get my stuff all prepped for me. There we go. So let's start with um, the Voxcaster guy. So
so let me zoom out a little bit. All right, so basic colors. When you see, um, you know, an army of Cadian guardsmen, you see a lot of the brown and the green. So we're gonna get started with the brown, Camry brown, and you're gonna be painting this anywhere. His uniform is. What I found really disgusting was all the the mold lines on these guys are pretty bad. Um, so just be careful of that. mold lines on these troopers are pretty gruesome. Okay, I'm going to show you one of the finished troops that I painted because both of these guys' backs are hidden by backpack pieces. So when you're painting the back part of the trooper, oops, that's not a good one. Where's one of my finished, finished guys? Okay, you're going to be painting the Camry Brown uh, over and under the straps. It's like their their coat uniform has this belt harness thing on their body. So paint the Camry Brown over there. Underneath the armor, in between the strap and the the flak. For those of you who are new, this might this video might get some new viewers who haven't seen most of my other videos just because Imperial Guard is such a such a big mainstream army. Uh, if you're a new viewer and you're wondering why am I painting over bare plastic, I am not actually. I prime all of my models in this duplicolor gray primer spray. So it looks really similar to the Games Workshop gray plastic, but it's not. So, no worries, I did prime my model. Yeah, and most of these guys, you don't really have to worry about the front of them because uh, they're gonna have a rifle or one of their weapons kind of covering the front, just like a Space Marine. Some of them though, like if you're going to do a guy with a throwing a grenade or the sergeant, then you are actually going to have to worry about how you paint the front. And that is right under, oh look at my brush, right under the flak above the belt line. I'm very stubborn about my brush. I use a fine detail brush, Citadel Games Workshop. Um, just because it, it works for me, I've had it for a long time. Got other brushes that I could use, but um, I prefer this one. Alright, so there's him. I guess we're going to be painting... the green armor. In between video clips, I'm going to go and paint up my uh, flamer to the exact same standards, so no worries about that. So I'm just taking my catechin green and I'm going to include this in step one on my annotations because it's pretty much the same thing. Paint the, uh, paint, paint the khakis and then the armor. So catechin green going on all the hard flak armor pieces. Helmet, shoulder pads, of course. Body armor. Whatever you, whatever you can see of the body armor, at, at least.
and the weapon. Also down here, not their entire boot, but they have like a like a lower shin guard that is green. And it has straps on the side of it. Kind of see it there. On his left foot. For the rifle, the Games Workshop website has anything you don't paint in green in uh, silver. Bolt gun metal, but I'm actually going to paint it black. Uh, give it a kind of a black casing kind of look to it. But really, you're painting the the majority of the body of the rifle in Katachin green, as well as the tip of the rifle barrel at the front. Okay, so that's step one: the armor and the uh, helmet painted. Okay, so in this next part of the video, well, let me show you what I did first. I painted the uh, little shin guards down there for the flamer guy. The flamer's weapon also is pretty close to the uh, regular las gun, las rifle. So. Um, you know, main part of the body, catechin green, this little binding over here, catechin green. For the backpack, I'm leaving pretty, pretty plain right now. I'm leaving it gray because um, we're going to be painting it in silver metallics and black in a second. But let's now stick with this guy and start adding in the flesh. So this next step, Talarn flesh is going to be our color. And we are going to paint the hands and the face. So, let's get our focus there. This brush has had it. Oh, I cannot give Igor any more days off. This whole place is falling apart without him. Okay. Switcheroo! You'll find when painting up these special weapons team guys that uh, like the grenade launcher, the flamer, you will find that it is really rewarding and fun after painting up, you know, the other eight or nine regular old rifleman troopers. Breaks up the monotony, so so treat yourself to a reward with these guys. I would hold off on painting them until you're, you know, maybe halfway or all the way through painting the other guys. I'm just taking you through them now because, um, because I want to show you how to paint them. They use pretty much the same techniques as the regular riflemen. This is terrible. All of my brushes are in desperate need of replacing. Okay, the last part, which is gonna be, might be kind of hard or difficult, depending, is uh, depending on, you know, how, how uh, non-shaky your hands are, is the face. So you want to make sure there's not too much paint on the brush and that you just lightly lightly get it on there so it doesn't get all thick and gloopy.
Okay. Then you're going to take your Chaos Black and you're going to start fixing and cleaning. So we're going to use the Chaos Black and paint the chin guard and all this part of the helmet chin strap. never really got into the Imperial Guard. I've, I've got a lot of the models, but I never got too far painting them. But I really, really enjoy the fluff and the, just the whole, you know, background and the whole aesthetic of the normal man. one among untold billions. You know, in a setting where you've got the, the marines and crazy insane aliens and warp spawn and giant monsters trying to eat you alive. I like the Imperial Guard for their just being just being regular old Joe with a laser. All right, so as you saw, I also painted black the back of the of the uh, armor. Next, what we're going to be doing is I don't have a rifle. Oh no, I do. I'll show you on this rifle what we're going to be painting black. The uh, comm officer's rifle. Oh, look at that brush. It's terrible. None of my brushes are working out for me right now. So the ammo clip. The back part. This is terrible. I don't I don't blame you if you hit dislike on this video because or a thumbs down because of the uh, poor quality of my brushes. Let's see if I can find another one that'll work out a little bit better for us. Um, where were we? And this little part at the top of the stock. And the, this part of the barrel. Some of the rifles have bayonets on them. I'll show you how to paint those. Yeah. So those are all the black parts of a, of a regular rifle that you'll be painting. Regular last rifle. Now let me show you how to paint the same-ish areas for the flamer. If you want, you can paint. I did them in black because uh, I don't really like the look of too much silver on my on my Cadians. But you could do the same thing in silver uh, for for the flamer. I like the black color to be relegated to the tubing. So like down here, we'll leave this nozzle gray for now so that it can be painted um, silver in a bit. But for the, the tubing for the, what is it, Promethium? Paint that black. And For every model, let me show you how to paint the, um, the boots are going to be black and let me show you how to paint the body, harness and the belt in just a second. So we're doing the boots, 
right under the shin guard that we just painted green. I think it's interesting that uh, the quartermasters, armorers, whoever, that decide what pieces of armor guardsmen are going to have, decided to go with shin guards. Rather than like knee pads or thigh guards. Like if they cast some shrapnel or flak right down there, um, I think it would be worse if it was higher up on their legs. Am I wrong? I don't know. I don't know anything about personal body armaments or anything like that. Some of these guys are going to have pouches so you can paint that in chaos black so it sticks out from the from the uh, from the rest of the uniform. And like I said, you're painting across the front. So, I'm cut back again to our finished model. We'll be painting the brace all the way around the model at the hip, this, the, the belt they're wearing. And then it comes back and goes right up the back. Okay. If by chance when you're painting the Chaos Black on the chin strap that you get some black paint on the face, then you can go ahead and paint some Talarn flesh again. Alright, one more thing before we continue is that I did paint the uh, braces for the pr Prometheum tanks in the back with uh, black, Chaos Black. So, let's continue with the um, metallics which is really only bolt gun metal to start with. I'm going to be painting with bolt gun metal, all the silver bits. I also, for the, for the box unit, I decided to paint it pretty, um, pretty much in all in chaos black. And you can decide whether or not you want to do that too, but I, I figured that all chaos black with some accents would be really good rather than making it all silver and metallic. I kind of see the silver as like as like spot a spot color or an accent color. Don't really want to put too much of it on my on my models. knobs at the top of these two tanks for the flamer are so weird and they're hard to hard to shave off completely because it's a rounded surface so uh, I'm definitely gonna have to go back over that on the brake is 
and this little joiner over there. So as you can see, I'm finding places to pick out silver details. The barrels here. As a whole, the silver is really more of a more of an accent color than a main color. Okay, and you can also paint the belt buckle silver. So that's the flamer, and let me show you what it's going to look like for a regular rifleman. Really nothing. Because I like the black as the accent color, but you can definitely use the silver for the for the bayonet at the front. Also, find places to paint the Vox setup on the back. Silver. And the aerial as well. Finally, the little, um, I don't know what this is, a speaker system? I don't know why the Voxcaster would have a speaker system. He's just relaying orders to the sergeant, right? He's not don't want to give away the plans to the to the enemy about what they're doing so I don't know why you would need it ah, I don't know okay and on the back of the actual Vox, Vox caster unit you've also got different um, different knobs dials switches that you can decide what you want to keep black and what you want to paint in silver so I'm gonna be doing the opposite of the back of the Prometheum tanks. For the flamer operator, I'm going to be making these brackets silver, as well as this handle. To give some kind of, these two handles, give that accent color. Okay, the last two things we're going to take are dwarf bronze. and paint the tip of the flamer.
go. And the last thing for this base coat phase is taking astronomic on gray and then painting in all the aquilas. And like anything, if you mess up, just go back and... Do a little bit of touch-up right there. So there you have it. At this point, all of our base coats are down and we're gonna begin doing the washes. So first thing is Ogren Flesh for all the skin. <clears throat> if you get too much in there, then just dry off your brush and then stick it back in to pull up some of that, some of that excess. And then for the rest, bad at black.
avoiding the wash from pooling in any one area. So you're doing, you're doing the khakis, the armor. I wanted to get into all of the all of the cracks and crevices. I kind of like it because it has a very uh, greasy machine oil kind of look to it when it when you put it over the metallics. this dry and then when we come back we are going to do the highlighting final details and finish up so thanks for watching part one don't forget to leave a comment subscribe hit the like button and we'll see you in the next one